As you come to to be a Buddhist monk and follow the Buddha teaching, this is you, and your journey is there. Okay, there is something called nibbana. This is where you want to achieve nibbana. However. What is the practical way or practice that takes us to Nibbana? As a Buddhist monk, you should keep on reminding yourself, how can I get there? Okay? With all the teaching of the Buddha, 84,000 of these courses mentioned in the Buddhist text can be summarized into three headings or three groups. The first one is called Sila. Second one is called what? Samadhi. Yes. And the third one is called Panya. Three things. With everything the Buddha teach 45 years can be summarized into three categories. Sila is about being ethical person. It's about precept, right? Everyone you know, kind of understand that. Five precept, eight precept, two hundred precept, one thousand precept. It falls into sila. Sila is about body and mind. I'm sorry, body and speech. Purify your body and speech. Okay, preventing you from doing a bad thing, killing, stealing, lying, intoxication is in precept category. Okay, this is sila. Okay, and then what the second one is called samadhi. And we learned two days ago what is mean by samadhi. Samadhi bhavana, right? Samadhi bhavana or jitta bhavana, which is, means mind development, to purify the mind. Mind development or jitta bhavana, this means samadhi. And to be precise, this is what we learned last night. This is samatha. Samadhi refer to samatha. What is samatha again? Is the mind development that aim to achieve the stillness of the mind, right? And there are more than 40 techniques that mentioned in Visuddhimakkha. Again, Visuddhimakkha is not the Buddha word. It's composed by the Buddhist scholar back then. But it's considered one of the chapters in the Buddhist text. And I mentioned 40 techniques of how to calm the mind down, how to keep the mind still. And this is samatha, which is point to samadhi or mental development. But it's not enough for us to achieve Nibbana. The Buddha teach us to develop further than that, which is develop the wisdom or Panya Pavana. Panya means wisdom, right? You need to develop wisdom through something called we what? We but sana. We learned last night. So now you see where samatha is, where vipassana is, and both of these need to need to be supported by sila. Okay, you have to be an ethical person to get yourself to nibbana. Okay, Kunjai Chan, give one word to summarize all the teaching of the Buddha for someone to reach nibbana. She said one word. From all the teaching in the Buddhist text, she said one word. And, and that word is purity. If a man is impure, he cannot realize Nibbana. Purity of what? Body, speech, and mind. And then you realize Nibbana. Very simple. But Long Po said slightly different. He said, the secret to achieve Nibbana is stillness. Stillness is the key to success, but it points to the same thing. In order for you to be pure, in order for the mind to be pure, that mind needs to be still, and still at the right place. Okay, so now you see the picture. Okay, if I want to reach Nibbana or realize Nibbana, I need to develop myself under three categories. Okay, seen, Samadhi, meditate more, and then Panya. The question of Samatha is not that difficult to answer of how to do it. Samatha 
it's not that difficult. There are 40 techniques mentioned clearly of how to be calm, how to calm the mind down. Reflect on the Buddha, the Dhamma, the Sangha, reflect on the dead body, reflect on the food. Mention clearly of how to do that, Kasina. I have everything on the list 40 techniques in this book. You can locate which technique works for you and you can practice according to the text. Samatha, clear instruction on Samatha site. The question is how to practice Vipassana. This is very unclear. There's no place in the text mention of how to do it. And another surprise information for you is if you look at all letter in the Buddhist text, you may not be able to find that the, how the Buddha actually teach meditation. Don't take my word for it. I challenge you to go check. But the Buddha talked about develop mindfulness, how to cultivate mindfulness through the body, the feeling, the mind, and the mind object. Okay? So I, I asked myself, okay, how can I find out of how to do vipassana? How can we practice vipassana? Because without understanding and practice vipassana, we cannot achieve vipassana. We just cannot. It's impossible. Because Samatha, Prince Isatha has gone through that, right? He learned from two great meditation masters, Alandaka Dabot, Uttaka Dabot. But it, his mind still feeling like the suffering still there. He was happy, the jhana, the equanimity, happy, good, feeling good when you meditate. But when you are meditation, that feeling is still there. Cannot remove the cause, the root cause of suffering until he figured out something called vipassana. So he did something in his mind, he practiced vipassana, and then he realized nibbana. So our job is to find out of how to do this. Sati Patana Sutra. All the Buddha that exists in the past and the Buddha that will be exist in the future follow the same path. Sati Patana. Okay? The four arousing of mindfulness. Listen to this sentence carefully. This is the direct path. This is the direct path. For the purification of being, for the overcoming of sorrow, lamentation. For the disappearance of pain, distress, for the attainment of the right method, for the realization of unbinding. In other words, the four mindfulness, the four arousing of mindfulness. Basically, this is dukkha. If you want to completely free yourself from dukkha, you need to follow this path, the direct path. And the question is, what is the direct path? Okay, so back to this. This is the path. This is the path to Nibbana. Right? The path has to go through Sila, Samadhi, and Panya. Okay. I have to be pure physically, verbally. I have to be pure. My mind has to be still. Okay, kind of got that. But how can I remove the root cause of suffering through attaining the highest wisdom? through the Vipassana practice. So what is the path that leads us to Nibbana through Vipassana practice? This is the key. So I start from this particular sutra. And when I get to know the teaching of Rampo, everything comes together perfectly and it makes the whole sense. To be short, the path that leads us to Nibbana is the quest to attain the Magaya. Following me so far? <laughs> okay. Whenever you hear something new, whenever you learn something from someone, okay, the Buddha said, you don't just rush to believe. At the same time, you don't just rush not to believe. If you do either of this, you will learn nothing. Take information with you. Digest, think upon it. It will become your wisdom later. But for now, a lot of things may be new to you. Maybe some of you here heard the word Dhammakaya for the first time in your life. So some of you may have heard it before, but you have no idea what it is, how to achieve it, right? 
So uh, that is why this topic is quite deep, and we need to have teacher to help answer a lot of questions. Tonight, I'm going to take you a tour here and there from the Buddhist text. Where is the word Dhammakaya? Is Dhammakaya is a new technique? Just Long Pu made it up, or it actually the technique that the Buddha in the past, Arahant in the past, actually practiced it to realize Nibbana. We have a proof that we can you know, kind of track it down where is Dhammakaya mentioned in the Buddhist text and how do they practice back then? Okay, and when did it get lost? And how come there are not many people mentioned about it? If it is the mainstream Buddhist meditation. But Dung Pu, when he realized Dhammakaya, he proclaimed, he confirmed that this is it, this is the mainstream Buddhist meditation that all the Buddha have practiced and achieved Dibbana, realized Dibbana through the path of Dhammakaya. Okay, this is something quite interesting. So let's have a researcher mind, <laughs> okay, do research with me, okay, and to see what will be uh, discovered tonight. Long Po, he called himself a rediscoverer. Rediscoverer, this is the keyword. He did not create it. That means someone discovered before. And then he rediscovered it. Ah, this is what people practiced back then. This is what the Buddha did. So he rediscovered Dhammakaya meditation. What it means by Dhammakaya meditation. Okay. From uh, Bob Mousen. The word Dhammakaya is a Pali word from the ancient Pali language. And it means inner body of enlightenment. It... Um, constitutes meditation from various um, other meditation techniques uh, with visualization, with breathing. And one of the things special about this meditation is that you use a crystal ball as a focal point and you imagine that crystal ball floating at the inside of your stomach. What takes place then inside that crystal ball? It doesn't matter what religion you are. You can meditate on a cross inside that crystal ball. A figure will appear and a succession of figures. And those figures look rather like Buddha images, but they're not. They're called Dhammakayas. They are inner bodies of enlightenment. How they come about, I really don't know. But I've taught people of all different faiths, and they see those Buddha-like images inside that crystal Are those Buddha-like images different and right. an individual? It, it yes, they on are. The each one is different. And each one is more beautiful and more refined than the first one. And one sees a succession of these Buddha images as one goes through the meditation, if one is a, a very good practitioner. This is the starting point, what it means by Dhammakaya, by a man who actually realized it himself. Okay, Bob Mousen is a certified Dhammakaya meditation instructor in the West. Actually, there are two of them, okay. a man and a woman. Okay. His name, Dong Pao gave him a nickname, Thammabut. Thammabut means the son of the Dhamma. And another woman is called Thammatida. Thammatida means the daughter of the Dhamma. So both of them from the U.S., okay, they helped spread Dhammakaya meditation in the U.S. I'm talking about 20 years ago, I guess. Okay, Bob Mousen ordained in the Dhammakaya temple. Okay, he got himself certified by the abbot of Port Tamashio. And he went out, out there and teaching people how to attain Dhammakaya. And if you listen carefully, one thing that real life, one thing that happened for all of us in the whole world who achieved Dhammakaya, even the intermediate level or uh, elementary level, you feel the love and compassion to all beings with our condition. And that is why I understand Lampas Namashio why he wants everyone to meditate and achieve the inner peace. Otherwise, the real world peace cannot be happening. We can go through UN channel, we can go through political channel, there's no way that world peace can be happening if human beings don't meditate. Okay? That, that loving kind of needs to come from the mind, not, not, not just come from understanding intellectually that it's a good thing. No, it has to actually come from the feeling. Okay, anyway, this is Bob Mousen, and this is another lady called uh, Dawn Barry. Okay. Bob Mousen passed away a few years ago. Bob is one of a kind. He's always smile, uh, 
easygoing, uh, very understandable person, very supportive person, always smiling. Okay, see people who meditate a lot and have a good meditation, that kind of characteristic, it's more like common for them. Okay? You can you can feel the positive energy when you are around with people with good meditation. Okay, and Don Barry is still you know active in the West, I guess. Okay, uh, somewhere in the United States. Uh, she also certified Dhammakaya meditation instructor okay, from the Dhammakaya temple. And back to the original, okay, back to the master, there will be the lecture on the life of Lompu, not tonight. Okay, tonight I want to get to the point what it means by Dhammakaya. Dhammakaya meditation rediscovered by Pramukhonte Muni. At what boat bon bang khu There is a temple called Bot Bon in Nontaburi. Okay. Uh, some of you may have been there. Okay, what bot bon? This is the place where he sit. Uh, he was ordained around 11, 12 years until he find out okay, the word Dhammakaya. Okay. He has been searching okay, of, of how to meditate, of what is Samatha, what is Avisha. Okay. Lumpu is a very curious student. When he ordained, you know, first day he ordained, let's say he ordained this morning, right? And in the evening he go, he went in the chapel for the evening chanting with his monk friend. And they do Alahang Sama Itibiso Pakhawa. And he asked the monk's friend, that, what's the meaning of what we chant? And the monk said, I don't know. And he said, don't you want to know? He said, no, I don't have to. I just follow what people do. People chant, I chant. But don't go, think oppositely. He said, I'm not going to be like that. I want to know what I say. I want to know what the Buddha means. So he got himself, you know, uh, he got attention that he wants to learn Pali. He wants to know the Pali language, which is kept the teaching of the Buddha. Back then, there was no Tipitaka in Thai yet. But there was a Tipitaka in English. English people have learned Buddhism 50 years earlier, earlier than Thai people. That is why many Buddhist scholars come from England. Okay, Thailand we just got translated into Thai version of Tipitaka 50 years later. So back then in the time of Longpu, the only choice you have to know, the only choice available for you to know the teaching of the Buddha is to learn Pali. So he said go to go to Bangkok because the best school that teaching Pali was located in Bangkok, not in his area. So he asked his permission. Later on his life go on to study Pali. That's that what happened in what Bodh Bodh Bang Kuvian. So he said meditate. Okay? And he said, whatever happens, if I cannot attain even small part of the truth which the Buddha knew, I will sit to death. If I die, my action will be a model for goodness for monks and Buddhists. Okay? Later generation. This will be my virtue if I should die. <laughs> When Buddha said, sit until death, okay. even my skin, my bone, you know, my body explodes, I will not leave the seat until I realize the truth. The, the, the Long Pu follow the same path, okay? But this is not recommended, okay? <laughs> you don't have to do this tonight, okay? <laughs> you know when the time is right. <laughs> Otherwise, you will be die for sure. <laughs> we don't want any funeral this day, okay, because of the COVID. <laughs> so, but this is Longpu, okay. He was very serious in meditation, and this is what happened in his experience, okay. After a while, he said, Oh, it is so hard like this. This is why not many people have achieved it. Four things need to be in fall into one place perfectly sensation, memory, thought, and cognition. This is the mind function. Has to be still at one place simultaneously. Must be united into a single spot. Once the mind is still, it ceases to be. Once it ceases to be, the new one can arise. That, wow. <laughs> that's how he explained his experience. And that is why it's difficult for a normal human being to realize it because these four things has to be united at one point and that point has to be the center of the body but remember no one teach Long Pu of the center of the body where should you place your mind when you meditate no one teach him he find out by himself and this 
sentence of Long Pu explanation of his experience. I when I reflect on this, I can relate it to when the Buddha actually, after his enlightenment, he spent seven weeks reflect on his discovery, right? And before he went out and teach other, he realized that maybe not many people would understand because the Dhamma he realized is so profound, the Dhammakaya is so profound, Nibbana is so profound. Non-human being who feel with lust, hatred, anger, delusion would understand what he is trying to say. So the Buddha was reluctant to teach. And later on he realized that, okay, maybe someone is smart enough to understand his teaching. Then he went out and located the teacher and he, you know, find the five aesthetic of Panjavaki and he, he gave the Dhamma Chak teaching. And then the wheel of Dhamma starts from that moment on. But even in Dhamma Chak, there was nothing mentioned in the word Dhammakaya. He did not tell the first student that, hey, I realized Dhammakaya. You guys need to practice Dhammakaya and then achieve Nibbana. No, he didn't say that. Okay? If I remember correctly, there are only four places in Theravada Buddhist text that mention the word Dhammakaya. And that is why in Theravada Buddhist school, Dhammakaya is more like a foreign word. And people still debating, oh, Dhammakaya is a wrong practice, don't follow. Even Dong Pu himself, when he achieved Dhammakaya, people call him crazy because it's difficult to achieve. Okay? So, uh, he summarized just one sentence from his discovery. Stillness is the key to success. Okay? Stillness means what? These four things need to be united. Sensation, memory, cognition, and thought need to be united at the center of the body only, no other place else. If you still the mind here at your forehead, at your knees, cannot go further. You cannot realize Dhammakaya. It has to be at the center of, of the body. And where is the center of the body? It's right here. Two finger width above your navel. He discovered the position of the breath. There are seven beds when we, when we breathe in and breathe out. Okay. There are seven beds. Base 1, base 2, base 3, base 4, base 5, base 6, base 7. Base 7 is where you should keep your mind there when you meditate. This is the middle way. This is the middle path. This is the gate to the middle way starts from here, from this point at the seven base of the mind. Again, nothing like this mentioned in the canon. <laughs> after 500 years, after the Buddha passed away, the word Dhammakaya disappear. But in the time of the Buddha, Dhammakaya may be a common language that people use. So they don't have to talk about that. But after 500 years, no one knows what it means by Dhammakaya. It appears in the Buddhist text, but there is no explanation. Okay, let's take a look at the example. This is the one in Akhanya Sut. When the Buddhist scholar talk about Dhammakaya, they must reference this sutra, Akhanya Sutra, okay? Akhanya Sutra is one of the beautiful sutra that talk about the origin of the universe. First human being, okay? Interesting, right? So you must stay longer. <laughs> okay, in this sutra, the word Dhammakaya appear, okay? Dhammakayo ahang itipi. This one, this is in Pali. And this is translated into English, okay? Akhanya Sutra. Dhammakayo itipi, which is mean the body of Dhamma is the Buddha. Okay? Dhammakaya is the body of enlightenment. He refer himself to Dhammakaya. Dhammakaya comes from Dhamma with Kaya. Kaya means body. Dhamma means the truth. So altogether is the body of truth or the body of enlightenment. That's what it means. And that's it. That's all we know. That's all we know. We don't know how to achieve it. We don't know how many levels of Dhammakaya. The Buddhist text only mentioned the word Dhammakaya, but it doesn't explain what kind, how many kind, and how can we attain them, all of them, until Rong Pu Wat Nam actually rediscover of the way to achieve Dhammakaya, 18 bodies. And this is the master, the one who rediscovered Dhammakaya meditation and then he passed his knowledge to 
คุณยายมัสเตอร์นันคุณยาย pass all of her knowledge which she learned from หลวงปู่ทูหลวงพ่อธรรมชิโยหลวงปู่เป็นคุณยาย have pass เอาได้ดิหลวงพ่อธรรมชิโย still around okay and we can still ask him question we can still learn from him okay หลวงพ่อธรรมชิโย love to answer all the meditation question so first of all d h a m m a k a y a is not It's not new. It's an ancient meditation technique, okay? That many people practice back then. And the second thing is d h a m m a k a y a is actually appear in the Buddhist text. This is the researcher of the uh, uh, of uh, uh, Dhammachai International Research Institute. Okay, they did a lot of research. They try to locate the word d h a m m a k a y a in all Buddhist texts around the world, all languages. And collect it into one place, so they came across one of the sutra in Khmer, in Khmer Buddhism. It clearly said, "The path to enlightenment is the quest for the Dhammakaya." This is the path. It's the direct path that take you to Nibbana. In order for you to achieve Nibbana and enlightenment, you need to search or quest for Dhammakaya. You see, you can relate it to the story of Long Po. You can relate it to the inner body and enlightenment. Without the Makaya, enlightenment is impossible. It's just impossible. And these these are the four places that mention in the text. a k a n y a s u r okay, uh, is number one reference that most people use. We may not realize the Makaya at the moment, but at least. We should be fully certain that it 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 is something real in the Buddhist text. d o n g p o did not make it up. d o n g p o Thamasio k u n y a did not make it up. It actually real, and it 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 actually the mainstream Buddhist meditation. When we shift to Mahayana Buddhist school, the word d h a m m a k a y a is very common for them. They know no surprise for them. But in Theravada school, a lot of debate, a lot of confusing. Okay, but if you study Mahayana school or you have Mahayana friend, monk friend, when you when you talk to them about the Makaya, they will have no surprise because they know what the Makaya means. Okay, the Makaya is the Buddha in the stomach. <laughs> so when we meditate, we may find the Buddha inside our body. There are many doctrine that teach about achieving the inner body in Mahayana texts. No surprise. But as you go deeper in the Buddhist text. You cannot find it, and that's why Buddhist scholar they have doubt: is it real or is just someone added on later on? Because the Buddhist text get into the format, uh, writing format, four hundred years after the Buddha passing. That is why there may be many things that get lost, right? Here we come to the concept of vipassana and samatha. Is dhammakaya vipassana or dhammakaya samatha? We learn about samatha yesterday, concentration, right? And we learn about vipassana, which is develop wisdom. Okay, d h a m m a k a y a meditation is the combination of both samatha and vipassana. Okay, just like Bob m a u s o n explained in on the video, for the samatha part, d h a m m a k a y a meditation technique incorporate at least three samatha technique. The first one is kasina, kasina visualize the bright ob- bright object. Okay, kasina. There are ten kasina that you can select. Okay, when we visualize the crystal ball, visualize the crystal ball is considered a l o k a k a s i n Okay, the bright sphere object. And then the second technique on samatha side is called recollection of the Buddha virtue, a b u d h a n u s a t i When we say samma arahang, samma arahang, it bring our mind back to the Buddha. Instead of let the mind wandering round, you use the word samma arahang, samma arahang. Every time you say samma arahang, you bring the wisdom and the purity of the Buddha into your mind, and that's the meaning of samma arahang. Okay, but for you, you know, as a Westerner, you may not familiar with Pali. You may get confused what it is. n o m a s a m a s h i o said, you don't have to say it if you don't understand. You can say clear and bright, clear and bright. It work the same. It work the same. Okay. If samarhang is is too long, is confused, it 
create doubt. Don't say. Don't say. And the third one is called anapanasati, which is mindfulness of the breathing. So three of these combine together from samatha side, okay, until the mind can remove five hindrances, and the mind will be still. And that stillness of the mind will take us to the level of the first jhana, the second, the third, onward. Okay, and this is samatha side, and for vipassana side. What it means by vipassana? Again, vipassana. I already mentioned that vipassana is here, the direct path, the full foundation of mindfulness. This is vipassana, which means what? Contemplation on body, feeling, mind, and my object. This four thing is called s a t i p a t h a n a Or the arousing of mindfulness from what? From the body, from the feeling, from the mind, and from the mind object. Okay, this sutra is quite long. Okay, I did give the full lecture on this. It took like two days to go all of this you know, body, feeling, mind, mind object. This is vipassana, and here is appear here. Vipassana is contemplation on body. Feeling mind and my object, and how can we contemplate body, feeling mind, my object? You need to have eyes, right? Eyes, which is c a k u k a r a n i I not this eye, is the eye of Dhammakaya. c a k u k a r a n i and then j a n a k a r a n i happen, knowledge happen. Okay, there are steps before we can get to the point where we can do the vipassana or contemplate of the body. Contemplate of the body. It doesn't mean you try to intellectually contemplate your physical body. You cannot let go this five aggregate. You don't see the condition of this body. Okay, you still cling on it. So you keep the mind at the center of yourself, and then you apply these three technique. Can be one of these. Can be two of these together. Can be all of these together. It doesn't matter. You just work around this. Okay. Combination of samatha, samatha device or samatha object. When your mind completely still, then you move on to vipassana. And the key word here is this. This is when I come to. When I come to, uh, relief. Okay, my confusion, my doubt gone of how to do vipassana. There is no way that we can do vipassana if we don't have the right tools or the right eyes to see things the way they are. l o n p u p a t a m a s h y o and l o n g p u a n a m confirm the same thing that in order for us to do vipassana, to be able to do vipassana, you need to achieve the eyes of t a m a g a y a k o t a r a p u k o t a r a p u mean transition between mundane realm and to the supra mundane realm. You in between, you see both world, the world of compound and the world of non compound. This is getting more intense, getting more technical. You have to get to this level in order to do vipassana. Otherwise, below that, it's samatha. They are samatha. So there are 18 body. I know it's late. I know it's a lot of information. We don't have to finish all this tonight, and we cannot rush to finish all this. I don't want to leave you any doubt or you know uncertain. I just want to give our information for you first to confirm with you that hey, d h a m m a k a y a meditation is the mainstream Buddhist meditation. And it did appear on the Buddhist t e x t The b o o k Long Po happened to be the person who found out, rediscovered of how to achieve it, and he teach us step by step. Okay, keep your mind at the center of the body. Utilize these three technique. Okay, visualize the object using the mantra, or think of the Buddha, or use uh, uh, your breath, anapanasati, following base one, base two, base three, all the way to base seven. This is. Use your breath as a samatha technique, and when you get this done, when you get this samatha done, five hindrances will be removed. You start achieve the perfect equanimity. Human body, there are two uh, form of each body: crude and refined. Okay, crude body and refined body. The higher we go, the higher we achieve, the purer we become, the purer state of mind. Otherwise, you cannot achieve something that more refined. You have the mind has to be refined. 
your mind has to be pure and purer. That is why you can go up to 18 body. And the last body is Dhammakaya Arahan. This is where the Buddha and those Arahan in the past have realized and then their mind is free from all defilement. Then they can realize Nibbana. There are many technical terms here and including these two important terms, non-compound and compound. We will come back to this. Okay, but I will end here. We are so fortunate to be able to hear the teaching that explain about both compound and non-compound. No one ever explain about non-compound, which is this part. We only heard about compound. What is compound? Compound means condition. For example, the body is condition. Body and mind, earth, water, wind, fire become our physical body. This is compound. Everything that considered compound subject to change. Whatever subject to change, it considered suffering. As long as we still cling on whatever subject to change, we will be running in the realm of suffering non-stop. We have to find a way to realize something that non-compound, okay? And sape, sankhara, anicca, all compound are impermanent, subject to change. Sape, sankhara, tukha, tukha. All compound things are suffering, tukha. Okay, kind of understand that. But the last one, sape, dhamma, anatta, not understand. What is, what is sape, dhamma, anatta? What is Dhamma refer to? There are a lot of debate on this. Okay, Dhamma include what? If Dhamma include everything. Everything means both compound and non-compound. This is not correct. Okay, we cannot include Dibbana into this category because Dibbana is non-compound element. I, I shouldn't use the word element. It's a non-compound thing. Okay, uh, there is a section called Nibbana on this book. Please go back and read it. Okay, you will understand what I mean by compound and non-compound in this book. Okay, the last section. And here to keep it short, the mark refer to just the five aggregate. It's compound thing. Five aggregate is non-self. If we cling on this five aggregate, we will be suffering. And this is the summary of the Buddha teaching. He discovered the law of nature and he tried to teach us, try to help us to understand. If we understand, then we can let go. That everything is anicjang, everything is tukhang, and everything is non-self. Your body is non-self. Your body is not your body. My body is not my body. It's become us because of the karma that we created. And it's put everything together as a condition. But we cannot understand that fully until we realize at least Dhammakaya Khotarapu. We need to have his eye first, and then we use his eye to look back to each form of this body further down, and then we understand, hey, it's so true that we are not we, you are not you. We are just a condition that waiting and subject to be changed, to be disappeared. As long as we still have karma, we will come back and be born again. And that form of life is a fire aggregate also subject to change, keep on changing like this nonstop until you realize that, hey, you know what? There is something called Nibbana or non-compound condition and then you work your way up to that point, then you can be free from suffering. This is the place. That's why the Buddha talk a lot about Nibbana in different, in different form of teaching okay, to understand what it's mean by unconditioned.